$1,200 limited slip differential. Or free 99 welded diff. Does more expensive mean more better? Let's find out. Mine's in a bag. Mine's in a box. Let's go. <laughs> We bought two almost identical Nissan 350Zs and we've been modifying them to be fun daily drivers that you can take to the track. But we're not just building these Zs to be race cars. We're building them to be fun cars, okay? And what's more fun than doing some sweet, sweet drifties with your fronds? So to do that, we're gonna be swapping out our differentials. Well, I will be. I'll be doing the time-honored option of welding my differential. Now, I bought a Kaz Super Q two-way clutch type LSD. What does two-way mean? Well, I am so glad that you asked, my sweet boy. Two-way means that the LSD engages the same amount during acceleration and deceleration. Two-way is generally the choice of us drifters. What are the pros of that? Pretty much everything. This thing should engage really quickly and predictably, and it's supposed to run cooler than a lot of similar LSDs. What did it cost? 1,200 bones. I <laughs> Oof. <laughs> so another way to prevent that one tire fire slippage is to not spend 1200 bucks and just weld the spider gears together, which permanently locks your wheels together at hmm. all times. This is great for straight land <laughs> applications like drag racing and drifting. But when you go around corners on the street, the wheels need to go different speeds and the diff can't do its job anymore and the wheels end up constantly scrubbing and breaking traction in small little jumps. Even when you're backing out of a parking spot. <laughs> It'll be great. There's no way this is gonna be bad. When it comes to installation, one of the biggest differences between welding your diff and replacing it completely with an aftermarket diff is time. Welding your diff is a pretty simple process. It's like four steps. All right, so Aaron and I are underneath our car. And as you can see here, this is the drive shaft. This is where all the power comes from the engine into the differential back here. So pretty much what we're trying to do is take the mechanical disadvantage that this open diff is giving us, which you can see by having one tire burn up and the other one perfectly fine and lock those both wheels so that we put all the control into the driver's seat. All right, can we start wrenching? The beginning steps for both teams are basically the same. First, everything that's in the way needs to get out of the way so you can unbolt the diff and drop it from the car. We gotta drop the axles down. We gotta drop the drive shaft. Yes, sir. Drop the exhaust. Probably, yeah. Sway's gotta come out. Probably, well, it's just gotta come down, I think. Sway's gotta come down. Yeah. And then the diff mounts. So oh, you've yeah. got three of those, uh, right? One, two, and three. Yeah. And then that's it. I'm gonna go put a LSD in your thing. <laughs> Whoa, buy me dinner first. We got it out without dropping the exhaust. Hey, aren't you supposed to be working on your car? I already got it out. We didn't have to drop our exhaust. Oh, yeah. If we didn't take it out, how would we know that it's good? It's oh, good. Yeah. That is good. We, we wouldn't have known that exhaust. if we didn't take this out. I got it. You got it? Yeah. Okay. I got it. Once the dip is out, drain the fluid, remove the cover, and scrape off all that nasty silicone. Noise. Since Low Team is reusing their old diff, they can just leave it in the housing, but they need to clean it a lot. All right, breathe. All right. Welds will not stick to dirty metal. So this is pretty much a perfect example. This is the one tire fire. Load is being put on this, therefore the outside is being turned because that's a path of least resistance. Once we weld it up, both of them will turn at the same time enabling us to do way better skids. Since Low Team wants this to be durable AF, they're gonna do something a little different. So our initial plan was just to weld each gear together to lock the diff up, but buddy Alex came through and had a much better idea to make these plates, weld the plate to the gears itself, one on each side, which is gonna be way more structurally sound, and I do not see this diff ever breaking. Once the plate is welded inside the differential, they can reapply the silicone, bolt on the cover, put the diff back in the car, and fill it up with fluid. That's it. Oh yeah. Meanwhile, us grown-ups on the high car team had a bit more work to do. So we're gonna pull off these bolts. These are the bearings that allow the diff to spin. We'll pull the whole unit out. Then we're gonna need to swap the ring gear over to our CAS LSD, and then we'll put the whole CAS back in. Removing and replacing our diff as opposed to just giving it a weld job adds a ton more steps. We're getting ready to check the gear pattern uh, between the ring and the pinion. Basically, you usually use like an, an oil-based paint and you wipe it in there. 
rotate the diff and you see the way that the ring gear is interacting with the pinion gear, which is a very, very important part of the process and it's not to be left to amateurs. So I'm bringing in a pro on the grease tip. Welcome to James's Lube Corner. Hi, I'm James. Today, we're gonna lube some grooves. These grooves are brand new and they're in dire need of some lube. What I'm doing is shoving some lube deep into five of the grooves. That should do. Time for a nap. Thanks, James. So now that we're all lubed up, uh, we're gonna spin the diff and see how the ring and pinion are working together. It's gonna be kind of tough to see since this isn't bright blue paint, but we should be able to make do. We've got good contact pretty much across the face of the uh, tooth on the ring gear. Not too deep, looks perfect. how little I noticed the welded diff. That thing looks hard at night, for sure. I came out right when he was like three-wheeling into the street, and I was like, oh, that's pretty convenient. It looks really good, though. Now that we have checked our gear pattern, checked our backlash, we're ready to pull the diff out. One bearing cap, two bearing caps. So now that we've got everything checked, everything lubed, everything uh, ready to go, and the bearing cap's out, we gotta yank the stub shafts out, and then we can pull out the diff. Once the old diff is out, all we have to do is pop on the new bearings, swap the ring gear, and watch your hands, and drop that puppy back in. All right, so we got the LSD all in the pumpkin, so we're gonna check some things before we put it in the car. We're gonna check backlash and gear pattern. Uh, the backlash spec from Nissan is 10 to 15 thousandths, so we're just gonna hold the pinion gear steady and rock the ring gear right at 15 thousandths. So backlash is good, now we're gonna check gear pattern. I'm a new hire at James Lube Shop. Doesn't take too much, just enough to squeeze through the gears as they spin. Basically what we're looking for is all the grease to be displaced from basically the whole face of the tooth. And that means that the pinion gear is making good contact across the face of the teeth, which is what you want. If you're out of whack, if your shims are off, you might just get a lot of contact on the toe or the heel, and then you have to shim the whole LSD left or right to change that. So our gear pattern looks good, backlash looks good. I'm gonna clean up the gasket, put the cover back on this, put it back in the car. Yeah, dude, buttoning it up. No problem. More fun putting it back together. You're not gonna be able to drive it tonight because this is gonna have to sit and dry. How long is it dry? Yeah, we definitely put it in the car right away. And then I'm thinking end of day today, we put fluid in it and then just leave it and let it keep curing overnight. That's the diff between a welded diff and a Kaz, like seven hours. Ideally, a limited slip differential is gonna improve your traction by sending power to both wheels, making your car more predictable and improve your lap times. A couple other things that LSDs are good for is burn burns and skitty boys with your bro bros. See if we can do a burnout. Back when we were rocking an open diff, those looked like this. <laughs> Only one tire would break loose when we tried to burn out, and once we were able to initiate a drift, the car was really hard to control. Yep, that's one tire fire. But after we put these stiffy diffies in our cars, our burnouts looked like this. <laughs> now hold on. You guys might be wondering why this footage is in black and white. Well, we did a color change in a later episode and weren't able to test the diffs beforehand. So stay tuned for that episode. Nolan cries. Uh, it's so bad. But for now, enjoy these burnouts. <laughs> So, does more expensive mean more better? Sort of. Yeah. 
sort of. The main thing that I feel like we gained from the more expensive aftermarket LSD versus the welded diff has been peace of mind. Full disclosure though, we have yet to drive these cars on the track. So far, we've only done some burnouts yep. and some donuts <laughs> and both cars felt a lot better yeah. doing both of those really things. Really good. So. One thing I will say though is that like it, it didn't take very long for me to get used to driving with a welded diff. Aside from really tight turns, it's really not that noticeable. One thing I have noticed now that we're adding more and more stuff onto the car, the more mods you do and the more weird noises your car makes, the more normies <laughs> look at you thinking that your car's broken, mm -hmm. even though you're making it cooler and better. Yeah. There's such a they don't understand us. The squares, you guys, they don't understand what we're doing. Why does your car sound like a click, 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 click when you go to the store? Cause it's cooler, Grandpa. You guys get it though. You guys get it. So Nolan, which one would you do? Would you go with the aftermarket LSD that costs 1200 bucks? Or would you go with the free 99 welded dip? You know, for once, I think I'm gonna take the high option. <laughs> really? Yeah, I think having that peace of mind is really important, mm -hmm. especially in a car that you're gonna drive every day. But there's just that 5% feeling in the back of my head that's like, is this gonna break if I do a 90 degree turn in an intersection, you yeah. know? This is a bombshell episode because I would go with the welded dip. No Yeah. Way. I would go with the cheap option. Oh my God. It's free. $1,200 <laughs> is a lot. a lot of money. That's a lot. Especially when you add all the other stuff that we're putting on these cars. High car is very expensive at this point mm -hmm. in the build. And I think I would be looking for any opportunity to save money. Also, I'm not Lewis Hamilton. I'm not Chris Forsberg. I'm not even Nolan. <laughs> I'm not a good driver at all. So as long as both wheels spin, I think I'm pretty happy. And if you break it, it's free. And I have AAA, so I can get towed <laughs> home. So I would go with the welded dip. And on that bombshell, follow us on Instagram, uh, at Donut Media, follow me on Instagram, at James Pumphrey. Follow Nolan on Instagram at Nolan J. Sykes. Yes. The J stands for James. We have another great episode coming up next week. We're going to put some racing seats in our cars. Maybe uh, roll cages. You got to tune in to find out. Yeah. Pretty exciting. Oh, you got a new wheel as well. Yeah, I'm going to get yeah. a new wheel from Ken Goosh. It's going to be fun. Oh, also, we started a car club. If you guys want to join, hit us down in the comments. Hashtag boost creeps. Gonna have some merch if it gets popular enough. Be nice. I love you. See you next time.